What is leverage? When and how to use it? Let's say that you are an investor with a capital of $400. That is your buying power. You make some intelligent trades that yield you a 25% return, which means you have a profit of $100. If you had more money available to put on the same trades you made before, you could have earned a higher profit in terms of absolute dollars. At this point, leverage comes into play. You bring your $400 and your broker, in this case eToro, loans you four times that sum to place your bets. Your buying power has expanded without having direct access to the money. Now you make the same trades as before, but your net return is five times the one you obtained prior, $500. You return the borrowed money to eToro and keep your profits. At this point, things look all good and using leverage looks like the no-brainer choice for all your trades. But let's look at some specifics. As I said before, to increase your buying power, you have to borrow capital. As expected, this comes with fees. The value of these fees depends on a few factors the multiplier you decide to use, the amount you place on a trade, and the length of time for which you hold your position. As a rule of thumb, and as of now on eToro, for leverage 2, your costs are at around 15% per year, and for leverage 5, at around 40% per year. Keep in mind that this is a proxy, and for each trade, you should check your exact fees. The other factor that comes into play when using leverage is your stop loss. Most of the time, when you place a trade, there is an automatic stop loss of 50%. This percentage value depends on your platform and local regulations. Since using leverage multiplies your returns, you are also closer to stop loss when using it. With leverage 1, a daily loss of 12% would not trigger your stop loss. The same is not valid for leverage 5. Given the costs we outlined before, it's time to understand when using leverage is profitable. First, let's plot the relationship between the underlying return and the return you obtain. Now, we vary the multiplier. Increasing it changes the slope of this line. Let's look at the graphs for leverage 1, 2 and 5. Under the assumption that there are no costs, the situation is like this. Now, we update all three lines by subtracting from them the associated fees. Leverage 1, no fee. Leverage 2, 15%. And leverage 5, 40%. We have three intersection points that will guide us in choosing a multiplier. We can ask ourselves exactly what leverage multiplier should you choose in placing a buy trade. Considering the intersection points from the previous plot, we know that for a small return, for example, 5% annually, leverage one is our best choice as our fees are higher than the added returns. Similarly, for a high yield, 20%, the highest multiplier works the best. More formally, we can expand this to a flowchart that requires two estimates, our expected one-year return of the underlying asset, and the probability that the asset's value decreases by a specific percentage from its current value. This chart shows a limited view, given that it takes into consideration only the one-year returns and uses a hard-to-make set of assumptions. I still hope it provides some insight into when paying for leverage is worth it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and would love to see more, like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the alarm bell to be notified when new videos are released. 
Leave any comments or questions below or on the dedicated webpage. For more info, please check the description box below. See you next time!